Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Mach R5 Sport, a new 5-inch analog racing drone by iFlight. In this quick video I'm going to go over its features and specs, show you how to set it up, show you some flight footage and give you my feedback after testing it out. First of all, in terms of packaging, inside the box you can find the quadcopter, some stickers, quick start guides in English and Chinese, two sets of iFlight Nazgul R5 V2 5-inch propellers, a 25cm long iFlight branded battery velcro strap in addition to the one which is pre-installed on the quadcopter, two anti-skid battery mats, some spare screws, four motor nuts, two hex key drivers, a plastic shark fin along with screws for installing it on the drone and an extra part which enables you to lock the molded plastic cover in its position. In terms of features and specs, the Mac R5 Sport quadcopter features the iFlight Zing 2207 2050 KV motors. It comes with motor wire protectors. The stack and the rest of the electronic components are covered using this plastic cover which is locked into its position using this plastic part. The stack is based on the Blitz E55R 55 amperes BLL32 4-in-1 ESC, the Blitz Mini F7 flight controller and the Blitz Mini Force VTX which has a maximum output power of 600 milliwatts. In addition, on the back of the drone, also protected by the plastic cover, you can find the iFlight Albatross omnidirectional antenna and on the front of the drone, you can find the Runcam Nano 4 FPV camera. Currently, at the moment of shooting this video, the Mac R5 Sport is only available in an analog version and I really doubt that it is going to change. You will, however, be able to choose between multiple radio receiver options. You can get 2.4 GHz and 915 MHz Express LRS radio receivers, the TBS Nano radio receiver or a plug and play version which doesn't come with a radio receiver and will require you to install your own one. The radio receiver is mounted over here and next to it you can find mounts for any Motel T antenna. On the bottom of the drone you can find an XT60 battery connector as the battery is intended to be mounted on the bottom of the frame and as you can see the 4-in-1 ESC features a built-in 470 microfarad 35 volts capacitor. As for the frame, its wheelbase is 210 millimeters and it features a true X pattern. The thickness of each replaceable and interchangeable carbon fiber arm is 5 millimeters and its width is 10 millimeters. The frame, which I believe is going to be available separately, only supports stacks that are using 20 by 20 millimeters mounting holes. And using this kit, which is available separately, you'll be able to convert the Mach R5 Sport into a drone which is using a top carbon fiber plate. As for the shark thing, along with the two screws that are needed to install it on the top of the drone, it weighs 2 grams. It is installed in the following manner, and here you can see what it looks like after installing it on the Mach R5 Sport drone. The purpose of this accessory is of course not just to give it a pretty neat look, but to enable you to easily flip over the drone in case of a crash using turtle mode. Now, in terms of weight, without the battery, the Mac R5 Sport weighs 303 grams and including a GNB 1300 mAh 6S LHV battery, the total weight is 498.6 grams. As for setting up the iFlight Mac R5 drone, most of the beta flight settings, including the PAD tune, are pre configured for you and pay attention when installing the propellers that the motor direction is reversed. In case you have the Express LRS bind and fly version, the easiest option to bind the radio receiver is to set your binding phrase and after that you should make sure that all the radio sticks and switches are working properly. Finally, you should configure the frequency and output power of the video transmitter and set up your favorite flight modes and OSD elements. The next thing that I've done is to head outdoors and test the Mach R5 Sport drone. Overall, after testing it out, I can tell you that the main thing that I like about it is its performance and, of course, its design. This type of design is going to enable you to easily replace a motor and access the internal electronic components. And as you can see, the VTX antenna 
is properly protected inside the canopy and as far as I can tell the video performance was not impacted by this type of design. You might argue that this type of canopy is fragile but as far as I can tell it's not going to break easily in case of a crash and if it does replacement parts are available from iFlight so you can simply replace the canopy with a different one. Now you should note that in case you would like to mount an action camera on this drone you won't be able to do it at least not easily using this type of canopy and you will need to replace it with this top plate kit which is available separately from iFlight. In terms of flight time using this 1300 mAh 6S LHV battery you can expect between 2 to 4 minutes in case you are going to push the throttle and in case you are just going to cruise around which I doubt that you are going to do with this type of drone you can probably expect between 5 to 7 minutes. So overall as far as I can tell and keep in mind that I'm not much of a racer the iFlight Mach R5 Sport seems to be a great option for a 5 inch analog racer and by the way keep in mind that you will be able to change the analog VTX to a digital one you won't be able to use the DJI O3 but you will be able to change it to a walk snail or to an HD0 VTX now I'm going to wrap up this video with some flight footage as always if you have any questions feel free to ask them in the comment section down below I wish you all happy flying and I'll see you soon on my next videos. Goodbye.